greetings from me in my garden. Um, it's been a while, isn't it? <laughs> I'm trying to think what the last thing I posted was, and it, it was the Copenhagen vlog, wasn't it? Um, I have to say a massive thank you. I always feel like I want to say a massive thank you after every vlog because I always receive just the most incredible, thoughtful, insightful comments. Um, but in particular on last week's vlog, because of the kind of, I guess, emotional reflection that I included, there was some really beautifully like sympathetic comments and people kind of expressing that they totally get that feeling when I was editing that vlog I remember thinking I'm such a fool for putting this very emotional reflection in the vlog but actually um the response that I received after that um was just great just some people articulating that kind of frustration that you get of not being able to share the joy and the kind of overwhelming emotions you get sometimes when you're traveling on your own um and just the kind of the wave of emotions that you have to like really ride and embrace when you're traveling on your own um so yes thank you so much and after i got back from copenhagen i read um cold enough for snow which lots of people had recommended although it isn't like hugely centered around solo travel it's such a, a beautiful observational story that involves um there's some really nice passages about going to art galleries um food uh kind of seeing nice monuments and things in cities and that it's it's a really nice documentation of travel um it kind of made me think of like it's almost like a vlog but in a book form it's like my my dream vlog like in a book um i really like that um i kind of wish actually i'd read it while i was away because i think i would have had a bit more of a um more emotional connection to it i think um just a forewarning, like nothing really happens in the book, it is just a, a very sweet observational story. Um, but that tends to be, and it's quite short as well, but that tends to be some of my favourite types of stories to read actually. And um, because I think so much of it kind of reminds me of the way in which I kind of document everyday things within my vlog, vlogs, um, a lot of that is inspired by th these kinds of stories. Um, hence why I like this so much. What else can I update you on, or fill you in on, um, that is of interest? Um, I went on holiday to um, Menorca with my friend Liv, um, to a five-star hotel. It was incredible. So she was invited to this place called Villa La Blanc in a quite a small area of Menorca called San Tomas, doing some social things, um, and she invited me along to give her a hand, and wow. From start to finish, everything was impeccable. Service, food, interiors, the views, the pool, just everything. I mean, I don't know what I expected from a five-star hotel. I'm not sure why I'm, I was so blown away. I think just because I, I've never stayed anywhere like that before and it was just impeccable, incredible, beautiful, just, the, the, just gorgeous. It only just opened this summer. Um, so it still has that very kind of like new feeling about it. Um, I would really recommend it if, someone is looking for maybe somewhere to go for a honeymoon do you know what actually before i even keep talking about it why don't i insert actually some footage of it so that you have a visual reference of it <laughs>
Okay, hopefully that was helpful and gave you an idea of what the place looked like and um, just of, of the, the trip with Liv. It was so fun. Um, I've never been on holiday with her before and we're very good friends. Um, and it was just, yeah, a lot of, a lot of lols. Um, but yeah, it would be really good for like honeymoon, anniversary, birthday, like special occasion, or maybe not even a special occasion and you just want to treat yourself and you want a holiday where you just, everything is just great and you can just alternate from pool to restaurant back to, pe to beach and then back in because there's the beach is like 10 seconds away like you you walk out of a gate and the beach is there and you have like a, a gate that kind of from the hotel that leads down to the beach it's great it, it was absolutely sensational and I loved it so much so that I am taking Dean there in a couple of weeks for four nights <laughs> because Dean and I have hardly seen each other over the past like six weeks because of the way work is for both of us at the moment it he's been away and i've been away to a couple of places so we've been we've we've been very separate doing our own thing and then we come together for like a day or two and then we're back off again so we have literally been like passing ships in the night which hasn't been it hasn't been the nicest but um i'm very proud of dean for the project that he's been working on in london i can't really say anything because they're not allowed to share any details about it until it's all finished but I'm very proud of him um, because it's this incredible office space that they've been building um, and I he's been working so hard on it and I was like you know what you deserve a treat yeah so so we're gonna do that at the end of September what else can I fill you in on okay so there, there is actually I guess quite a, a large thing it, it is a big thing I'm not gonna downplay it um, I have a new job and it feels really weird to say that, that I have a, a I am employed by someone now. I have a new job. Um, I'm going to talk about this and kind of reflect on it a bit more further down in the vlog because I know this intro is already getting quite long. But yes, I got myself a new job. Um, I've been self-employed for about four years. And I remember when I went self-employed and finally like started to love it, I was like, I'm never going to be employed ever again. Like, I'm going to be self-employed for life. How could I ever be employed by someone again? Um, completely gone back on my word but um I am so excited about trying something new and this kind of like new chapter for me there's quite a few different changes that I'm making towards the end of this year which will be slowly revealed um and I just feel so good about it I'm going to be working at a gallery where I live and it's my friend's gallery so I feel like I'm just I don't know I just I'm, I feel so good about it I feel so good about joining this team of like amazing people and I can't wait for just like other new people that I'm going to meet along the way and just like learning new skills and having new experiences through this job and that's like it's just a whole new world um and I, I in my heart I have known that this is something that I need to do because I've been doing this kind of like influencer thing for seven years now um and kind of since I guess covid and like all those lockdowns and having a lot of time to kind of reflect and just like things on the internet changing quite a lot I have known that this line of work that I'm in doesn't quite sit with me morally anymore um and I want to try something new so yeah I I, I'm so excited like I just uh, I can't wait I cannot wait but yeah I'll talk about it a little bit more later on in the vlog and I won't bore you too much right now right I feel like we are edging closer and closer to that very awkward stage of the year where it's quite difficult to get dressed you know summer's on its way out autumn's not quite here so everything feels a bit confusing and awkward and often I end up just sweating my ass off I always get it wrong I think it's because I like prematurely bring my coats and my knitwear out before it's even, before they're even needed. Um, so I thought in this week's vlog I'll just document a few outfits to really document the failings of my getting dressed throughout this kind of transitioning phase. Like it's, it says it's like 23 degrees out there but I don't really know if it's going to be like a really muggy and high pressure 23 degrees or like a breezy 23 degrees. Anyway, 
As always, I'm a vision of colour today. I'm wearing a full black outfit with gold accents. Um, so from top to bottom, how do you know what? Actually, what I will say about this time of year, it can be kind of fun in terms of styling because it you have this like sweet spot where for like a few weeks, those weird pairings of like coat and, a sand and sandals or like knitwear and shorts kind of make sense, um, but it doesn't last long. So I, I kind of enjoyed that part of this this time of year, but otherwise it's an absolute, I'm a, I'm a mess basically. So, um, vintage Hermes cashmere tank top. This is from, no, sorry, it's not cashmere, it's wool. This is from um, a vintage shop in Paris called Preclothe, but they also have an online store, which I'll link below. Uh, Celine class bag, which doesn't get enough wear. I need to wear this more often. It sits in its dust bag too much because I'm too precious about it and I need to stop it. I'm very good at looking after my bags, even when I wear them loads. So I don't know why I don't have confidence in myself to, to protect this while it's out and about. Um, yeah, I need, I need to wear it more. It's such a beautiful bag. And then Saint the Store Belt, just a really classic black leather belt with a gold buckle. Uh, jewellery, I'm not wearing earrings today, which is very unlike me. I've always got at least like a gold hoop in, but I actually think this outfit is doesn't really need an earring because I've got all these little bits of gold and then I've got two rings, this dainty little kind of like organic looking band from Monica Veneda, which has a small stone in. And then this badass ring, this big chunky thing, um, this is part of the Kate Young uh, collaboration. It's so cool, like it's not something I've ever really tried before, but I love the black onyx stone in the middle, I think against the gold and with the sort of other bits and pieces going on, it just looks really cool. So that is jewellery, and then on the bottom half, I'm just going to lower the camera, I'm wearing cords, and this is where I could be setting myself up to fail and I might overheat today. These are from the garment, proper wide leg cords. They are a little bit too long, so I've had to turn them up, but they, when they're unturned, they are the perfect length for a mid-heel. So I don't quite want to commit to getting them permanently tailored just yet because I don't want to restrict myself. So I'm just turning them up for now. Um, heartbreakingly, I don't know if these are going into production. So Sophia sent me these while I was in Copenhagen to wear. They're a sample. Um, and then when I looked on the website, I can't see them anywhere and they're not even in the coming soon section. So I'm going to message her and find out if they're actually being made because they're so beautiful. And even on a short frame like me, I actually think they're really quite flattering and leg lengthening. Um, and I can easily sort of wear them high waisted and have that sort of like really long leg look. Or I can wear them slightly lower and go for that more sort of like slouchy relaxed look. Um, also, just <laughs> this is just me like saying out loud some of the small little intricacies that go through my mind when I get dressed. But I have to say, do you know what? I'm going to lift this up. I have to say, like, there's something so beautiful about corduroy in black, like, it, it has so much, like, more intensity and depth to it than just, like, I say, like, a black wool or, like, a black, I don't know, maybe, like, a black viscose or something. It just, the way I think it just, like, sucks up the light, it just looks so, like, plush, kind of similar to velvet, I guess, really. Corduroy has that kind of same intensity to it and then on my feet sorry I, I really didn't show my shoes I've got the the row Marie H sneakers on but I got them through Vestia Collective if you are interested in the Marie sneakers then definitely check out Vestia because there's a lot of um a lot of pairs of them knocking around right that is my look let's go overheat <laughs> right today's forecast is 20 degrees with a chance of rain <laughs> um I don't think it's actually going to rain, I think they're just saying that now because I don't actually think the weather people know what the weather's doing and I think 20 degrees of rain is just a cop out so that they cover most bases. Anyway, I'm wearing exactly the same thing I wore on the bottom half the other day, you know, when I had the cords on and my Marie sneakers on, but I've changed the top because I think the wool vest, even though it was a vest, I was... It was, it was kind of warm. <laughs> so I've gone for a cotton shirt now in the hopes that actually this will be a, a more sensible solution. Um, just gone for a nice half tuck, you know, with a very just rough, just sort of push my sleeves up in a very rough way. Um, this is from Scal Studio, um, a really beautiful Copenhagen based brand. Um, a small mundane musing just about this shirt because I think 
I find these things kind of interesting and I like clothes and I like the small intricacies that I notice when I get dressed. The colour of this shirt is the perfect in-between white and cream. It sits perfectly in the middle. It's not bright white and it's not a true cream. It's more of a slightly warmer white. I'd maybe say it's kind of like chalk. And the reason why I think this is an important detail is because I'm pairing it with black and often I think white and black, when it's that kind of harsh white, can look too high contrast and can look a bit too harsh together and it can often feel a bit too smart. Like I, I do it, like you know, with a white t-shirt and black trousers and I feel like it's, it's something's off and I think it's because it's, it's so white and then something's so black together. It just, yeah. So with this, it's just a little bit softer and just doesn't feel quite as contrasting um, and just feels a little bit more, I guess, casual. Um, yeah, that, that was my, mon my mundane musing about the colour of this shirt. Um, I'm also having a bit of a silver day today with my jewellery, which is um, usually, well, would have been at some point very unlike me, but silver is really increasingly making its way into my jewellery collection now. So much so I'd say like I'm really 50-50 with silver and gold, whereas I used to be like gold, 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 nothing else. Um, but I'm really learning to see the beauty within silver. I used to think that gold was the best and it looked great with everything, but actually now I really see how silver can complement an outfit and in some cases looks better than gold and works with an outfit better than gold and I think silver with this outfit is much like I tried gold this morning and I was like no it's not quite right I think it needs to be silver um so I started the starting point was these beautiful big chunky hoops from Monica Veneda which I wore a lot when I was on holiday but I haven't really managed to kind of incorporate them into a more casual outfit I don't know why because they're just silver hoops sorry that's gone really dark um like I wore them with like a really nice beige uh, linen waistcoat and trousers set on holiday but then when I've tried to incorporate them into sort of like casual outfits I don't know why I've just forgotten how to get dressed and put jewelry on basically anyway I think they look really nice with what I've got going on here they are they've kind of got a slightly like hammered effect to them and they're hollow which is great because I don't like heavy earrings I don't like that feeling of my earrings sort of like pulling on my ears and then my rings pretty much match my earrings. <laughs> they are, um, I think I showed these Monica Veneda rings in my wardrobe wish list, was it? I can't remember. I've worn them so much that I've kind of forgotten when I featured them. But I love wearing them just as like, just as a little pair on one hand and then keeping the other hand bare and just having these as a statement. Also a very satisfying click when they um, rub against each other. Sorry, the light keeps going in and out. I keep having to adjust it on my camera. And then belt also has a silver belt buckle, so yeah, silver. And then Old Faithful as my bag, the, co the Cos crossbody bag. I'll obviously link everything, as I always do. Um, and I also somewhere, in case I get caught short, I have a tiny little Muji umbrella that fits in here just perfectly. I'll step back <laughs> just, <laughs> just so you can kind of see. Ta da! That's my look. Instead of every movement being dictated by the story, sometimes people will just sit for a moment, or they will sigh, or look in a running stream, not to advance the story, but only give the sense of time and place and who they are. We have a word for that in Japanese, he said. It's called ma. Right, why well, have I like, just forgotten how to get dressed? Apologies for the mess in the background, it's been one of those one of those mornings. Today is just 20 degrees and cloudy. What am I meant to do with that information? I don't, I don't understand how to dress <laughs> for that forecast. No rain, so I can kind of, you know, go out securely knowing that I'm not gonna get drenched and don't have to layer over something waterproof. But it's just such a middle of the road forecast, isn't it? Um, I'm not 100% sure on what I'm wearing, but I'm kind of at the point now where I can't just keep pulling stuff out of my wardrobe and just trying things. I need to actually get on with my day. Oh, my camera's about to die. Hold on, I'm just going to plug it in. Right, plugged in. And this is a better angle, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, starting from the feet up this time. Um, 
Vivian Venezia, Velvet, Mary James, these are pretty much slippers that you can wear them outside because they've got a hard sole. Um, because they're velvet, I haven't worn them much just because of the sporadic rain over the past week or so. But today, fingers crossed, the weather forecast is correct and there won't be a spot of rain. They're so comfortable and they're so lightweight. Um, what I will say about them is if you find yourself on the kind of end of your size spectrum, size up, like I'm a five and I have wide feet, that's the other thing, I think if you have wide feet you should probably size up because they're quite narrow and I instead of a 38 went for a 39 and I'm glad I did because I think the 38 would have pinched a little bit too much, the 39 is like spot on. Um, and I got them through Luisa Viaroma but I would probably recommend checking the Vivi Venezia website at this point because I've checked this morning on Luisa Viaroma to see what's available and they seem to be selling through a lot of sizes quite quickly whereas on the Vivi Venezia website they seem like fully stocked in all sizes and colours. So that's them. Um, trousers are hom plisse. So when I got the, um, sorry, who knows, when I got the, I'm pointing because it's just there because I'm going to show a little comparison in a moment. When I got the pleats please dress, the Izzy Maki pleats please dress, I knew I wanted the trousers in the same material because that dress is so comfortable. It's like so low maintenance but delivers such high results because it can be worn to pretty much in any scenario you can dress it up dress it down sideways whatever like it's such a good dress and it gets a lot of compliments because i think the fluidity of it is really quite eye-catching it's such a beautiful like unique dress that creates some really gorgeous shapes um but the trousers are really hard to get hold of it, i specifically wanted the black in the straight leg um but yeah they're, they're sold out pretty much everywhere and I've been checking Vestiaire, I've been checking Depop, I've been checking eBay, um, but they do not come up very often. When they do, they go very quickly. So I started having a look at men's because I thought there, could, there can't really be too much of a difference in sizing, maybe just a little bit more like longer in the leg and bigger in the waist. So I ordered a men's one after kind of looking at the sizing. Um, and I have to say, I actually think I prefer these over the, the Pleats Please version, mainly because they've got belt loops and pockets, which I'm not sure if pleats please do, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they have pockets, um, and they're not too crotchy, which I was worried about because they are meant for men, although I think, I feel like this kind of style of stuff is very unisex, but they're not too crotchy basically, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, just as a comparison, because the pleat on them is slightly different, pleats please is finer and has a little bit of a sheen to it, whereas hom please say is chunkier and is much more matte. These feel just a little bit more structured. They're still very fluid and very comfortable, but the pleat is just, just a bit chunkier. And then shirt is a uh, vintage Hermes men's from pre-clothed. And then this is an old season MHL sweater vest. And then I've kind of done like a lopsided button up thing here just to stop the bottom of this being so uniformed. I just, you get what I mean? Bag. This is a dilemma, which I know the answer to, but I'm just going to entertain it. I really want to wear the Celine. I think the Celine looks very good with this look. However, the Celine is not the practical choice for today because I need a bag that I can put stuff in because I need to go out and buy boring things from boots and places like that. And the Celine does not fit much in it before it starts to bulge and then I can't do up the clasp. So <laughs> I'm going to wear the bindle. I think the bindle still looks good with this outfit. I think it's more just like the gold and the structure of the Celine, which I think looked cool with the outfit. Um, but the bindle's fine. And then I've got gold earrings in, but I don't think I like the way gold looks with blue. I actually think I'm going to put the um, Monica Veneda hoops in. I just think something chunkier and silver might look a bit better with the blue. Um, yeah, that, that's it, isn't it? That's the whole outfit, yeah. I can confirm today's look works because I've already been out and I didn't overheat, so I feel very 
proud of myself for accomplishing this, um, especially because it's 18 degrees and sunny, another very difficult forecast to dress for. So from top to bottom, I am wearing this cropped navy chunky knit from a South Korean brand called Buhi. Uh, they sent it to me last winter, so I'm not sure if this is a style that they still do, but it's super cropped and then the sleeves are kind of exaggerated in length. So I really like the kind of um, play with the, the balance of the silhouette. And then I'm wearing a, 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 like a low-waisted uh, kind of straight pencil skirt, but because this is so cropped, there is a lot of middle on show. So underneath I'm wearing one of those thin merino wool uh, long sleeve tops from COS, sort of semi transparent, you can kind of just see through it, really good for putting underneath things um, and using it as a base layer. And then I'm wearing this, I'll put the camera down actually so you can see, a uh, skirt, which I think is great for this type of weather. From Ray, it's navy, it's thick, it's wool, um, it's got a slit on the front, actually can you see that? Maybe if I need to... Better. Yeah, slit on the front. I went up a size than I normally wear. I think I've got this in a 10 as opposed to like an 8 that I'd normally wear in Ray because I wanted it to sit a little bit lower on the hips. Um, it's got pockets, I don't know if I've already mentioned that. It's just a really good sort of staple skirt and I really like it kind of balanced out with this crop knitwear. I think, oh, on my feet I've got the Vivi Venezia Mary Jane flats. I think this would look really cool actually. You could play around with like pops of colour along this bit. Um, I also think brown would be quite nice. I think brown and navy are a good colour combination. I did also try it with a shirt. Had a shirt tucked in and then just you could see the bit of the collar at the top and it looked great. But it just felt a bit too smart for today. That would be something maybe I would wear just when I want to feel a bit smarter. On a, on a slightly smart occasion, maybe to dinner or a meeting, I'm not sure, maybe to work, you know, I do have a job now. Um, and then a uh, bindle bag, because I have many things to carry around with me today. This seems like a really good point to sign off the vlog because it's been quite a chatty one, hasn't it? My voice has just continually made noises throughout this vlog. Um, I did promise I would do a chat about my new job didn't I um which I will end the vlog by doing that I'll try and keep it quite concise because I could be here for a very long time chatting about this so I have a new job which I mentioned at the beginning of the vlog and um to just kind of like cut it short I started doing kind of like Instagram stuff in my early 20s I am now 32 years old and I have a very different kind of attitude and outlook and just I'm, I'm a different person to, to who I was back then obviously you I'm in my 30s now and um, I I feel incredibly lucky to have kind of been there at the start of kind of like the influencer industry shall we say and seeing it kind of become what it is today and it was incredible an incredible experience I've had some incredible opportunities and it was a very very exciting time you know I'm in my early 20s and all of a sudden I am thinking about quitting my job and you know becoming self-employed I was like wow this is wild anyway fast forward to 32 years old I've now been doing this as my actual full-time like job for five years or six years I'm I, I don't know concept of time has gone out of the window now thanks to those kind of two years of lockdowns anyway and I feel like as I have watched the internet grow and especially social media become what it is now I am at a crossroads and I see what other people are doing other peers and you know I see people with books I see people with their own brands I see people with podcasts I see people going off to create their own agencies and stuff and none of those things I've particularly wanted I've thought about those types of things as the kind of like next step as a content creator but I, I can't say they are any they those are anything that I particularly want I thought about a brand but really does the world need another influencer brand no podcast I don't really know what I'd say you know like they're they're all things that have crossed my mind but I've just been like no I don't think they need to be done and with the speed at which social media is now kind of like with TikTok and all these other apps at this crossroads I feel like I have options it's kind of two options. The first one is, oh my god, my camera's gonna die. Okay, I'll continue the conversation here. Yeah, so 
I feel like but one option is I just keep going straight forward and I speed up, you know, I brace things like tick clock, I, you know, I start doing reels and all this kind of stuff and I just go in head first and just kind of embrace this change and embrace that this is the next stage of social media and this is how it is and just keep my fingers crossed that it all works out. Or the other option is I kind of veer off, you know, to the left and I try something new. I try a new industry or I kind of just keep at my own pace doing my own thing. And in my heart, I know I don't want to keep going forward and just kind of like chasing an algorithm and being this kind of like vessel for brands and just kind of chasing what I think is going to get me like views and validation and blah, 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 blah. I, I want to just do my own thing and I kind of want to keep at my slower pace, um, my long form content, my images and, and be happy with that. Um, and whilst I don't want to completely step back from what I am doing, I feel like kind of morally a lot of what is happening on social media now just doesn't sit quite right with me. And just with things like the economy here in England, like in the UK, you know, constant talks about going into recession, cost of living crisis, all of these things. And it just, this kind of industry feels a bit, like it feels icky to me now. And I, I just think I'd be so much more happier just selecting a few brands to work with and then doing my job. And so that is my plan. My plan is that I will have this job in a different industry and I can I can go and do that and then just create the content that feels more organic to me and work with the brands that I continue, you know, the ones that I normally work with and just just do that. Does that that sounds all right, doesn't it? That sounds like a nice way to kind of go into the next phase. This is my next phase. My next phase isn't joining TikTok and it isn't like making loads of reels and you know all that kind of stuff I think my phase is just getting a job doing that and just continuing to kind of do these things and whilst I'm not completely you know removing myself from Instagram YouTube or this whole industry this is the first step back I think this is the first step back and kind of pivoting towards something else and just seeing where it goes, I think. Um, so do not fear. This isn't me like being like, I am not going to be an influencer anymore. Like I'll, you know, I'm, I'm still going to be doing stuff, but I just hope that it will allow me, it will just like free me up a bit more and I can just kind of get my kind of organic kind of mojo and motivation back and just the you know you know what I'm trying to say so hopefully that just kind of gives you a little bit like in a nutshell that is why I've I've decided to get a new job um and I cannot tell you how excited I am like I, I cannot wait um just everyone's great I can walk to work sit in my office do my work be surrounded by like really good people and then come home and I, I'm just so I'm just so excited for this next phase I just cannot cannot wait um so yeah hopefully that that makes all sense and seems perfectly reasonable doesn't it <laughs>